Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now one of the questions that I get the most is about my RaceLogic replica. Like is it expensive and is it hard to set up? Well today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about it. So let's get started. Now just like its real life racing counterpart, which provides useful lap information to the driver, this replica does the exact same thing. It's made by a company called Simpush, and they produced a really high quality product. However, because we have a lot more usable data available to us in racing simulators, the information that we can display on this device is really only limited to your imagination, making this even more useful than the real life version. It also costs a fraction of the price of a real life one where a real race logic would cost you upwards of 1,500 Australian plus shipping, a Simpush race logic only comes in at $270 Australian, which is almost seven times cheaper, whilst performing the exact same job that a real race logic would in your simulator. You can purchase the Simpush race logic from AliExpress and eBay, although at the time of making this video, it's been out of stock on eBay for a few months now. Again, all purchase links are in the description below. I purchased mine from AliExpress and it arrived within about two weeks and I've had no issues with it. Now when you receive your race logic, here's what should be in the pack. The unit itself, which features an 800x480 Vocor touchscreen, housed inside a very nice blue anodized aluminium casing. A Limo 4 pin connected to the USB cable. There's nothing complicated about the cable, they've just obviously gone with the Limo connection in the unit to replicate the real life model. In our case it just acts as a standard USB cable. A USB drive which contains all the folders required for installation. And lastly we've got a small M5 bolt which can be used to mount the race logic onto your cockpit via small camera, 3D printed or visa mounts. I don't use any of these myself. I wanted a bit more flexibility with my mounting and I like to keep things simple. So what I did was put a strip of double-sided Gorilla Tape on the bottom of the race logic, and then attached a piece of Velcro to it. Then I did the same on the Alcantara dash of my simulator, and I attached the race logic like this. As you can see, it's pretty sturdy and it won't fall over during driving. So next, let's install SimHub. Now if you're already currently using any kind of vocal display on your simulator, whether it be this race logic or a dash display unit, and you're familiar with SimHub and Vocor, then go ahead and skip to part 4 because you don't need any of this. So to set up our race logic, first we need to install a free software called SimHub. If you've never heard of SimHub before, it's basically a program that allows you to control and use all kinds of sim racing accessories and gadgets on your PC, like displays, base shakers and LED lights. It's completely free to use, but if you want, you can purchase a license for around $12 Australian to support the creator, which also increases the maximum FPS of your devices from 10 FPS to 60. It's not really a requirement though, 10 FPS still looks fine on devices like this. So on the SimHub website, first click download and then download the latest version 9.1.8. Once it's downloaded, open the folder and run the application. Install it in whichever drive you like, the default being program files. Uncheck the box to download and install all USB drivers. We're only using Vocor screens here and we want to keep it simple, so we're not going to install all those unnecessary drivers. Once SimHub is installed, open the program and you'll find this first time use screen. It's personal preference for what measurement units you want to use, whether it's metric or imperial as well as the option to have SimHub start up automatically when you turn your computer on. That finishes off the SimHub installation now, so we can set up our race logic for the first time. So first, let's plug in the small USB drive that we got in our race logic package and open the file. The only one we really care about here is the Vocor screen setup driver file at the bottom. It's going to install the drivers for the display inside our race logic. You shouldn't need the file at the top starting with CH unless the two physical buttons on your race logic aren't working, which is highly unlikely. 
If later on they aren't working, then run this application to fix them. You probably won't need to do this though. Ignore the sim push race logic file here. This is the default dash template that's been made for the dash, but we've got one that's much better than this, which we'll install in the next step. You've also got a PDF guide here, which repeats all of the steps that we've mentioned so far. Run the Vocor screen setup application. Now that we've done this, let's set up our screen in SimHub. Make sure your race logic is plugged into one of the USB slots in your computer. Open SimHub and go to Devices. Add Device. Type V for Vocor in the search bar. Then select the generic Vocor screen option. SimHub should automatically detect the race logic and you'll see the screen turn on showing the standard SimHub dash which we're going to change soon. The last step here is to bind the buttons on the race logic and any others that we want to make the display change pages. Under the touchscreen in the top right, make sure the advanced option is selected. Then in the top left, select controls. On this screen, we'll be able to keybind any controls we want for the race logic. The only ones we care about here are the show next and show previous dash screen. Select the configure button for show next dash screen. This window will pop up asking you to enter an input. Go ahead and push the top or bottom button on your race logic. Make sure press type says short and long press. Click save. Then do the same for show previous dash pages and use the opposite button on your race logic and follow the same steps. If you have a wheel with a lot of buttons or rotary encoders, I'd bind one of these to do the same thing. You'll probably find that it's a lot easier to do this while driving compared to using the race logic buttons. Click add in each option and bind the same actions accordingly to a button on your wheel. Now let's install this dash template called Pace Logic Pro. It's made by Full Pace Sim Racing and turns our race logic from a simple lap timer into a complete race companion that shows a lot of important information on the fly, like weather, a track map, and a fuel planner. Here's all of the dash pages it contains, and we'll show you some in-game footage later on. You can download this dash for free from Race Department. You'll need to create a Race Department account, but it's simple and free to do. Again, all links are in the description. Once you've made a race department account, click the red download button in the top right. Once it's downloaded, open up the folders and double click on the PaceLogic Pro 1.6 SimHub file. Click the blue import to SimHub library button and restart SimHub. Go into SimHub. Select Devices. We can also rename the device as you can see I've done here. Open the main dashboard drop down menu. Select Paste Logic Pro. You should see the dash welcome screen load up on your race logic and it's ready for use. So at this stage you're done setting up your race logic and it's ready for use in your races and you don't really need to do anything further. Take your time exploring the different pages and the information that they offer. I'll show you some race footage now so you can see an example of the race logic during practical use. But if you want to go even further and get the full functionality out of this dash, then keep watching because I'm going to show you how you can customize it and how you can set up the unique touchscreen quick menu function in part 6.
Now let's take a look at how we can customize some of the pop-up info that's displayed to us on our race logic using its config file. To locate the config file, go to Program Files, SimHub, Dash Templates, Paste Logic Pro, JavaScript Extension. Open the Paste Logic Pro config file. Now it's all really simple, but if you're worried about breaking something here, save a copy of this file with the same name before you make any changes. That way, if you do something wrong, you can just paste the unchanged copy in here to reset everything back to the default. In this file, we can customize what pop-up information appears on our race logic while driving. The instructions are clear above each line, but the basic gist of it is that 1 equals on and 0 equals off. So for example, if we don't want an engine on message to appear on our race logic when we turn on the car in the simulator, we can simply change the number next to it here from 1 to 0. The same thing applies if we don't want a brake bias image to pop up on our race logic whenever we change it whilst driving. Change the number from 1 to 0. You'll see that some of these pop-up notifications are specific to certain simulators. For example, we have specific notifications for DRS and push to pass for Automobilista 2. Or invalid lap notifications that only work on Assetto Corsa Competizione. Everything here is labeled clearly and instructions are easy to follow, so take your time and make changes to your liking. Then save the file. In this last part, we'll show you how to set up and customize the touchscreen quick menu. The screen housed inside your race logic is actually a touchscreen, and the Pace Logic Pro Dash is designed to take advantage of this. Here's an image of the touchscreen areas on your screen, but we're only really going to use the middle area. The LED widgets just change the behavior of the two lights on the race logic and can be changed to act as the rev LEDs or delta indicators. First, we'll show you how to customize the quick menu and then show you some footage of it in use. First, open SimHub, then select Dash Studio. Type Pace in the search bar and you should see the Pace Logic Pro Dash come up. Now, again, if you're worried about breaking something, make a copy of the Dash first by clicking More, then Duplicate Dashboard, and make your changes there first to experiment. We edit the dash template, click more, then edit dashboard. This should open up the editor, which shows all the pages available on the dash at the bottom of the window. Scroll all the way to the right until you see these quick menu pages. What we can do here is change the name of each button and what page it takes us to. For example, say we want to change the gaps button to instead show us the track map data. In the top right, click the gaps folder to expand it. You'll then see this item here called Button. Click this. Then in the bottom right, you'll see the Target Screen drop-down menu. This will tell the button what page to display when it's pressed. Open this menu and select Track Data. Let's also change the name displayed on the button. In the top right under the Button option, select Text. Then in the bottom right, scroll down until you see the text box that's currently showing gaps. Change this to track data and push enter. Now you can see the button has changed accordingly. And now when we push this button, it'll display the track map data page instead. Let's try one more and change the leaderboard button to display tires instead. In the top right, click the leaderboard folder, select button. In the bottom right, open the target screen drop down menu and change it to tires. Then in the top right, select text. And like before, scroll down in the bottom right and change the text to tires. Once you're done customizing your quick menu, make sure you save the dash in the top left. Here's some footage now of the quick menu in action. If I'm being honest, unless you have your race logic mounted somewhere close to you, then you'll probably never use this function. 
or even the two physical buttons on the race logic for that matter. It's just much easier to bind the next page dash buttons to your wheel like we have so that you can keep your eyes on the race and not be distracted. But it's still good to show you just how advanced this device can be thanks to the PaceLogic Pro dashboard. And if you ever feel like you want to use that extra functionality, it's there for you. So that completes our guide on the SimPush RaceLogic replica and the PaceLogic Pro dash template. Again, take your time customizing things to your liking because there's so much that you can do with this device. At nearly $300 Australian, this accessory definitely isn't cheap. And if this is out of your budget, then don't worry because there's also a free digital version of the PaceLogic Pro that you can use on your phone, tablet, or even display it on your simulator as an overlay, and it's all completely free. I'll be making another video on how you can set this up in the future. But hopefully this gives you an insight into how this really cool accessory works. And if you've got any further questions, just leave them in the comments section for me below. So that wraps up our guide for today. Thank you so much as always for watching. Have a great week and I'll see you in the next one.